It's been a while since I made a video, so I thought I'd go back to the type of content that led me to start this channel in the first place, because it has been a long time since I did a video focusing on unsolved mysteries. So here are 5 very creepy unsolved mysteries, and be sure to stay until the end, because the last one is extremely strange, and there is some video footage to go along with it. On February 8th, 1981, Leroy Carter Jr. was sleeping rough in the Golden Gate Park in San Francisco when he was brutally attacked. After police arrived at the grisly scene the next day, they noted that Carter's head had been cut off, and also that it was missing. One of the only clues left behind at the scene was a headless chicken, part of which had been stuffed into Carter's body at the neck. Quickly realising that this case needed a specialist, the San Francisco police brought in Officer Sandy Gallant, who specialised in the occult and satanic murders. According to Gallant, the murder was likely part of a dark ritual involving Palo Mayombe, a black magic offshoot of the religion Santeria. Gallant believed that whoever had committed the crime did so to make a ritual brew from Carter's brains. She also predicted that the head would be returned to the crime scene after 42 days, once the ritual was complete. True enough, right on schedule, the head was returned to the crime scene 42 days later. However, despite having been called in, Officer Gallant was not taken seriously, and no one was watching the crime scene to make the arrest. The murderer escaped justice, and the case remains unsolved. Pauline Picard, aged 2 disappeared from her family farm in Brittany, France in April 1922. An extensive search failed to find her, but several days later, police received news that a little girl who matched Pauline's description was found wandering in the town of Cherbourg, about 320 kilometers away from the Picard farm. Pauline's parents arrived to examine the girl and announced that she was indeed their missing daughter. About a month later, a neighboring farmer walking near the Picard farm stumbled upon something horrifying, the mutilated and decomposing body of a young girl next to her neatly folded clothes. He alerted the authorities who arrived at the gruesome scene, along with the town's inhabitants, among them Pauline's parents. Although the girl's face could not be identified, the Picards made an unsettling realisation. The folded clothes were exactly what Pauline had been wearing on the day she disappeared. The area where the remains were found had been searched thoroughly when Pauline first disappeared, which suggested that someone had placed the body there fairly recently. The case became even more perplexing when the skull of an adult male was discovered next to Pauline's body, adding a second potential victim to the case. The case baffled the police. If the body in the woods was Pauline, as the evidence suggested, then what happened to her? How was the unidentified skull related to Pauline's murder? And who was the little girl from Cherbourg who had been living with the Picards? On August 7th, 1973, New Mexico CB radio operators were shocked and concerned when they started to hear transmissions from a young boy pleading for help. In his transmissions, the little boy told the radio operators that his name was Larry and that he was trapped in a red and white pickup truck with his father who he thought might be dead. According to Larry, his father had taken him on a hunting trip. At some point along the way, there was an accident and the truck overturned into a gully, jamming the driver and passenger side doors. He said he could not get out, he had no food or water and had no idea where the accident had occurred. He also made matters worse by constantly switching channels in an apparent panic. Much to the operator's frustration, Larry's signal kept fading in and out. The authorities were contacted and the search for Larry began in New Mexico. Thousands of civilian volunteers hit the roads to try and find Larry, but not all of them as part of the official search, which led to much confusion. As the days passed, newspapers and TV stations picked up the story, but Larry's signal was growing weaker and weaker, a sign that the battery was running out. By August 12th, no sign of an overturned pickup truck had been found. No one reported a missing boy, Larry's signal disappeared for good, and authorities claimed that the broadcasts were a hoax. However, no one has ever come forward to claim responsibility, and no suspects were ever named. Were Larry's cries for help a fraud, or did a young boy die trapped and alone? The mystery remains unsolved. In 1957, 
Two sisters, Joanna and Jacqueline Pollock, aged 11 and 6, were tragically killed in a car accident as they walked to their local church in Northumberland, England. John, their father, prayed and hoped every day that his daughters would come back, and it seems his prayers were answered. Just one year later, twin girls Jennifer and Gillian were born. The Pollocks were surprised to find that Jennifer, the younger twin, had birthmarks on her body and face in the exact same place as Jacqueline had. With that began a series of uncanny similarities between the twins and their dead sisters. At the age of two, the twins started to ask for toys which had once been owned by Jacqueline and Joanna. The girls had never seen or heard about the toys before. At age four, the girls began to recognise places that they had never been or seen before. One time they pointed to a school they claimed to be their school and that they had played in the playground behind it. The school was the one Jacqueline and Joanna had attended. Before he disappeared, Kenny Veach commented on a YouTube video claiming to have discovered a bizarre cave near Area 51, suggesting that he had experienced a strange sensation on his body as he tried to enter its unusual M-shaped opening. Fellow commenters urged Veach to film the cave, but he feared it so much that he said he would only return with a weapon. It took a while for Veach to venture out into the desert again, but he eventually posted an update on YouTube on October 17th, 2014. And uh, I'm looking for a cave that I, I found and I didn't have a, I didn't have a sidearm when I was here before and something about that cave just spooked me out of all the caves I've ever gone in. This one just made my body vibrate. The closer I got to it, the crazier my body felt and I was like, all right, I'm not going to go in there right now, but I'm coming back someday. And I talked to some people on YouTube and I told them, hey, I'm coming out here, you know, because they, they kind of called my hand on it. So I don't know if there's going to be anything to it, but it, it might be interesting. Uh, if I can find it, i got to relocate it. And this is a big mountain range I'm in. You know? So I just keep on walking. I'm kind of going down. I'm in a cre big giant creek bed right now. And uh, I haven't come to the area where the cave is. Um, so... It's along here somewhere. There's lots of little caves, um, but they're, you know, they're not the kind of cave I'm looking for. The kind of cave I'm looking for is, is deep and it's dark and it's, uh, it's, it's shaped like, it's, it's shaped just like the letter M. So lots of little caves and stuff along here. And it's about, it's about level with the ground, like like right like in an area like this. So I really got to keep my eyes peeled because I don't want to pass it. Did not find the cave. That is so weird. I mean, I thought for sure I was just gonna be able to find it. Um, I remember it being fairly easy. Uh, who knows? But I am at the mouth of the canyon. There, I'm just now coming out, and now I have to take a big left-hand turn and walk all the way back to my truck, which is a long, hard trip because I've got a lot of up and down to do. Following the update, Veach went silent until his worried girlfriend posted a comment a month later saying he was missing. Searchers discovered Veach's cell phone near an abandoned mine shaft, but his body and the mystery cave have not been found to this day. So, that was five very creepy unsolved mysteries. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with my videos. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at 5 TV for daily creepy and mysterious content. See you next time.